what is happening ladies and gentlemen my name is Ty behind the camera and sitting in front of us is the all new 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali this one happens to be in the Veloce trim which is the top of the line one with the Verde Fangio paint color which is absolutely gorgeous and it has a very nice black uh, combination of black leather and Alcantara interior so very nicely optioned out one for us to take a look at today throughout the video we are going to get a look at the exterior we'll then take a look at under the hood onto the trunk and we'll also pop the rear doors open take a look at how much rear space we have and finally follow up with the front seats but before the videos end we are going to take this for a quick test drive so make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video so you get a good feel for the new Tonali. First things first, our headlights are a very nice kind of tri-beam um, appearance to it. All LEDs for the daytime running lights, high and low beams, and the turn signals. Looks very nice all illuminated with this kind of thin, uh, long strip of lighting there. You can see even not in the sunlight, that color is just gorgeous. And for the Veloce trim, we have lots of kind of blacked out elements too. So the lower grill, as well as the typical uh, triangular alpha grill is all kind of blacked out in this kind of matte finish too. We have parking sensors up front. And if we take a look, we have a nice sloping hood with some subtle creases that go down into the grill. We have this nice metallic gray painted cladding going all the way around the wheels and down the side too. And that brings me to these gorgeous 19 inch alloy wheels that come on the Veloce. Uh, now these are actually the standard wheels that come on the Veloce trim, which is a uh, very, very nice looking kind of five hole design with the black pockets and the machined face. And the tires measure 235.45. We of course have the Veloce name on the fender. Black trim around the windows. Also blacked out mirrors with the little Italian logo there. Up top we have an oversized sunroof and the shark fin antenna. And if we spin around, you can see we have blind spot warning on the mirrors and as well as a uh, LED turn signal indicator. Now the front two doors have smart key entry, so you just tap a button here to lock the vehicle and put your hand behind the handle to unlock. And that goes for the front two uh, door handles. Now if we pop this cap here, you can see that this is where we plug this in since this is a plug-in hybrid. So you plug it in right here, have about 33 miles of pure electric driving. Um, that you don't have to worry about burning any gas and 33 miles is probably good enough for most people's commute So that is a pretty neat attribute of the Tonali and you could see right here They have a little alpha snake, but the head of it is a uh, plug. So that's pretty neat Definitely like the idea of a plug-in hybrid We have a nice spoiler back here with some black extensions You see we have our third uh, wiper as well as a third brake light. And take a look at how this glass comes down to kind of a point in the middle. That's a pretty neat design too. Back here we have full LED lights, same sort of styling. It's almost a, a 3D tail light too, which is really awesome. Looks very nice all illuminated um, with our LED turn signals, tail lights, and brake lights. And we do have a light bar that runs the width of the tailgate back here. The Veloce actually gets uh, some pretty nice exposed exhaust tips too, uh, which is a very nice feature. Comes adds a little bit of sportiness to the Veloce trim. We of course have our um, parking sensors back here, reversing camera, and your trunk release right next to the uh, reversing camera. Very nice classy badging back here too. And that will just about round out the exterior of the Tonali. I definitely think it's a very nice looking uh, small SUV with a great plug-in hybrid powertrain. 
One more thing I wanted to show you is just the sticker price. We don't have too many uh, optional extras on this car, just the paint color coming in at $2,200. Definitely worth it, gorgeous color. And we also have the moonroof with the destination charge included. We're at $52,990 for this particular car. Let me know what you think of the exterior design in the comments. Under the hood, we of course find plug-in hybrid power which means we have a gasoline engine and a smaller electric engine. Now the gas engine is a 1.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder. And combined with that electric motor, it makes 285 horsepower, 347 pound feet of torque. So this little car must fly and we will definitely test it out on our uh, little test drive that we do at the end of the video. Now, as I said before, the electric engine itself is good for just about 33 miles of driving range. And as far as some quick charging times, you can get eight hours to a full charge on 120 volts or two and a half hours to a full charge on 240 volts, which is pretty cool. All this is hooked up to a six speed automatic and all wheel drive as standard. Alpha also includes a pretty small engine cover so you can actually see what's going on under the hood and actually the turbocharger is right up front and we have some of the uh, bright orange components that you probably don't want to touch because they're high voltage but it is a pretty neat uh, engine and powertrain for the Tenali. See how much space we have under the power trunk lid on the Tenali. By the way, beautiful angle to see that gorgeous green paint. And opening it up reveals a pretty good amount of space back here. Now, given it is a smaller SUV, it's to be expected to have a smaller uh, compartment for storage, but it really isn't bad back here. We have plenty of space. And I wanted to leave back this back here too so that you could see that you've got charging cables with the car. Uh, we do have a full privacy cover too that you can take off if you'd like. And we have lights to either side, grocery bag hangers to either side, and a 12 volt power outlet on the driver's side. Underneath we have some more storage too. And our tire inflation kit. Now we can fold the seats down at a 60-40 split, but you can also see we have a pass-through right there. So, once you're done in the trunk, you can either press the lock the doors and close the trunk button, or just the trunk button. Let's get our first glance at the interior of the Tenali with the rear seats. Now all things given, you actually have a pretty good amount of space back here. We'll start on the rear door panel. We do have some pretty hard touch materials up here and towards the bottom, but it only goes up from there. We have this nice kind of textured trim around your door handle. We have the, um, of course, the window up down lever and this pretty neat cloth material with some red stitching uh, where your arm is going to rest we do have a speaker on the rear door too and a little bit of storage but take a look at these seats very nice looking seats on this car we have leather kind of on the on the headrests and the outsides of the seat then we have this kind of alcantara suede material with a like uh, with a red coloring um, beneath it with some stitching. So very, very cool idea with the seat. And they of course do fold down with this little lever here. And that will make the trunk floor uh, level with the rear seat so that you can uh, store larger items through the rear of the car. You can also fold down our rear armrest to see we have the pass-through the cup holders, and a place to put your phone as well. I'm going to hop in so you can see how a guy my size, which by the way I am 5'10", fits back here. It's a pretty comfortable seating position, and a guy my size, again 5'10", I have just a couple of inches of leg room behind uh, seating behind myself. It's a pretty nice place to be back here. There are some air vents here where you can adjust the airflow. We also have a USB-C and a regular USB um, outlet there. Pretty flat floor too at the bottom. Uh, so if you had to fit a third person in here uh, temporarily, you certainly can. 
full black headliner and you even have some cutouts where the rear occupants will sit so we have plenty of headroom we have some led illumination up here and as you can see the oversized sunroof continues very very nicely back here all right let's take a look at the front cabin which i know you've all been waiting for Let's take a look at the driver's door first, which where materials do improve. So now we have a nice soft touch material up here in case you like to rest your elbow at the top of the door sill like I do when I drive. There's some more of that nice silver trim, which we saw out back. Our lock and unlock uh, buttons right next to the door handle. Now we also have all of our window and mirror controls. We have a window lock out there. And then we also have our mirror adjustments, which is in this pretty cool uh, design here. You just pick a side, adjust. And then this button at the bottom is for your power folding mirrors, which this car has. More of that pretty cool gray cloth material with red stitching. Very, very soft material, whatever, the, whatever it is. We have six speakers on this one, but we can get an optional 12 speaker audio system. And a little bit more storage on the driver's door. We have the Alfa Romeo branded sill plate greeting us when we enter the vehicle. And on the left of the dash, we have some pretty cool air vents, some more of that nice suede Alcantara uh, with some stitching. We also have all of our headlight controls in this circular adjustment. Um, we all, and, and as well as the gauge dimmer, the fuel door release, not the electric uh, plug-in, the fuel door release, as well as the trunk release right there. You can also see the uh, lever for the tilt telescoping steering wheel. You just release that. You can go up, down, in, and out. Down here, right above, we have the hood release and our nice sporty looking pedals. Now take a look at the driver's seat. It is very, very comfortable, I must say. And it's got a really neat design with this kind of suede and it kind of wraps around to the rear of the seat, kind of giving it an appearance of a like a, a, a bolsterless seat towards the top, pretty neat design. We of course have the Alfa Romeo logo stitched in the headrest. and full power adjustments too with four-way lumbar. So here we are seated in the Tonale and we of course are greeted with a very nicely styled interior. I really like the way they set the screen there. It's kind of like floating in place. Very nice use of materials with the Alcantara stitching and the metal accents too. Just a very nice overall design for the interior. But here goes the key. We have the traditional Alfa Romeo key fob with the logo on the back. Lock, unlock, trunk release, remote start, and panic alarm. And we also have the Alfa Romeo script towards the bottom there. And if you need a physical key, all you need to do is just squeeze to either side where my thumb and pointer finger is and slide the back of the key down and you'll have a physical key if you need that in any um, way. But this of course has push button ignition and traditional Alfa Romeo fashion, it's right on the steering wheel. So just foot on the brake and press the button. And most of the time, if you have enough battery powered, uh, you won't even hear the actual gasoline engine start up. Um, all of the power will be fed by the electric engine in this case. Now, very nice looking steering wheel for this car. Uh, pretty traditional Alfa Romeo steering wheel, but uh, it's nonetheless very, very nice looking. Gets nice and warm too with the heated uh, function too, but nice uh, grippy elements right here at your uh, um, nine and three grips and smooth leather everywhere else with a flat bottom design nice uh, bright work towards the bottom too and over here we have all of our media and uh, adjustments for the screen up there so we have the audio volume um, and this is for adjustments on the screen there uh, that one as well and then this one is for your voice commands and the Bluetooth phone to the other side we have all of our adaptive cruise control settings and of course our star stop button behind the steering wheel and mounted to the column we have these giant paddle shifters you have a very nice satisfying click when you pull them um, behind that we have our stocks here uh, for our turn signals high beams and also uh, to turn on and off your lane assist very quickly 
To the other side, we have our front and rear wipers and of course our other paddle shifter. That brings me up to our gauge cluster, which is all new, of course, for this year for the all new Tonali. Uh, but this gauge cluster also continues into the Julia and Stelvio, which is a very welcomed uh, appearance. Uh, very classy look to this as well with the kind of old font uh, with the numbers kind of tilting as it goes around. Very, very cool. Um, and it is adjustable. Um, Throughout your different driving modes, uh, it, the, the gauges will adjust slightly, but you also have this little page button where you can press that and then scroll up and down to get different menus such as your map display, uh, real time and average miles per gallon, uh, driver's assistance systems, any messages, uh, kind of a charge and power screen, which is pretty cool. And it'll give you a range of of all three, uh, kind of just your battery power, just your gasoline power, and combined. That is pretty neat. Now, in case you're wondering, that information will always be displayed here as well. Uh, we have some hybrid information, and back to our digital speedometer. Over here is where you will see your um, distance to empty just on full electric, and then right over here is where you'll see it on just full gas. And then right in the center is where you'll see um, it for uh, combined. So very nice looking gauge cluster. And I can cycle through the different um, modes so that you can see the slight adjustment. Now this, this is the advanced efficiency mode going back up to normal and then up to dynamic. Uh, dynamic will immediate, immediately start the gasoline engine and change around to have a more prominent red line. So those are the three different gauge setups on this car, so pretty neat. Taking a look at the upper dash, we have the uh, pretty soft to the touch material. And that brings me down to our touchscreen. Very, very nice, intuitive, and very easy to use as well. We have the uh, shortcuts at the side here. Our home screen has a nice combination of the map as well as what the radio is doing and some presets as well. It'll also display some um, climate controls, and we also have some shortcuts towards the top. Uh, we can kind of swipe down to get different uh, kind of preset uh, menus there. So that's pretty neat. Going back to our home screen, we can kind of just get a uh, kind of jumblation of all of your different apps from the top. We have different profiles you could set, um, set up. Also, any notifications that the car is going to let you know about and your exterior temperature, uh, which is pretty nice. Amazon Alexa is also built into this vehicle, uh, which is pretty sweet. Uh, we can look at our media screen here, where we have uh, the Sirius XM setup. Once you're on media, all of your presets will show up down, down below, and we do have a couple of pages of presets, which is pretty awesome. Looks very nice with everything that's playing, and our sources are to the side. Also get a page for the sources and browse, and then also adjust you all of your audio settings. We have a comfort screen, which really has to do with the, all of your climate controls and heated seats, heated steering wheel, all that good stuff. So we have our dual zone uh, temperatures right over here with these sliders, where you want the air to blow. Of course, your heated seat and heated steering wheel for the driver, and then your passenger heated seat. All of our AC uh, and, and defroster settings are down there synchronize and then uh, exterior air or recycling over there it is an automatic climate control too and we have all of the fan speed now the best thing about this climate control is that all of the functionalities are in physical buttons right below the screen so you really never need to go through the screen except for the heated seats and heated steering wheel so that's the only thing on this car that i'm not too big of a fan of i wish that they had just included uh, a, a physical button for the heated seat and heated steering wheel. But if that's the only thing I have to gripe about so far, it's pretty darn good. Really kind of impressed with this car, uh, just to let you guys know that. Built-in navigation too, we have a nice map and you can enter in your destination right here. We have a phone screen which won't display a whole lot because we don't have our phone connected to it at the moment. Uh, but we do have a vehicle screen here too which has a bunch of different adjustments. Uh, kind of my car which has all of your servicing information and uh, even a drive mode explorer which we can kind of um, 
we'll show you what each drive mode does. We have our trip settings. A hybrid screen. Pretty cool to see your power flow. And also your driving history. Got kind of charging schedules and things like that. So some pretty neat screens in there. We also have some performance settings too. So we could see uh, how much turbo pressure we're producing at that current moment and how much torque is going through the engine. So if I press on the gas a little bit, you can see slight changes there. Pretty neat. And then we also have our accessory gauges here. So oil temperature, transmission temperature, and your 12 volt battery voltage. We have different controls over here where you can turn the screen off and also view your rear view camera and a bunch of different settings that you can go through um, in this setting here. That pretty much does it for this screen. Very, very nice, intuitive, and very easy to get used to as well. Uh, so this is kind of the first time I've really been in a Tenali to check it out, and it really only took me a couple minutes to figure out how to use this screen um, and what it's all about. So very nice to see that. A couple of kind of hidden air vents here with some neat styling. We have our um, hazards right in the center and our full array of climate controls. So our temperatures to either side, automatic, your um, front and rear defrosters, fan speed, and then where you want the air to blow, as well as some AC settings. Right down here, we have a little bit of storage, which can also be used for a wireless charging pad for your phone. Very nice. We have a 12 volt power outlet, USB-C and USB type A. So all kinds of connections up here including the wireless uh, charging. We also have our drive mode select, so the DNA system. So we have uh, A for the advanced efficiency and for normal, D for dynamic, and we can also turn the traction control off. But one nice thing the Veloce has in this trim level is the addition of adaptive dampers. So when the damper uh, icon turns red, we will have a stiffer ride to get better handling. But at any time, you can also just tap it and turn it back to a more comfortable uh, and soft damper selection, which is pretty cool. On our test drive with our acceleration, we will switch it over to dynamic and see if that makes a difference, which it certainly should. Down here we have our shifter, which is a more traditional shifter. Very nice looking though. We can pull it down into reverse. That'll bring up your parking sensors visual and the uh, reverse camera with guidance lines and then we of course have neutral drive and then we can bump it over into manual mode which you can shift down here or with the paddle shifters right over here we have our audio volume in this pretty cool roller dial we also have an electronic parking brake A little italian flag right here too and on the other side we have the e save button which will uh, kind of save the electricity and primarily drive the car with uh, the gasoline engine and then we can also have a button here to turn off your parking sensors a couple of cup holders here with this neat center stack design and a very nice and soft armrest which you can lift it up and there is a little bit of space it's actually pretty deep in there Off to the passenger side, we have a nice kind of aluminum trim look to this car with your Alcantara um, dashboard. If we pull down the glove box, there's actually a pretty good amount of space in here. It's a little bit narrow, uh, but it does go in nice and deep. Take a look up top, like you saw before, full black headliner and our visors will fold down to have a mirror and light. Up at our center stack, we can see we have some adjustments for the sunroof sunshade. So let's open up the sunshade. Full powered, of course, and it is a single pane sunroof, but it is definitely oversized. So this one is used for your sunshade. This one is used to slide the sunroof. And this further up button is used to tilt. Over here, we have a bunch of lighting controls, uh, all LED illumination on the inside of this car. And... Uh, that pretty much does it. One more thing I wanted to actually point out, I just saw we have garage door openers on the top of the driver's visor. But that pretty much does it for all the features of the Alfa Romeo Tenali. Lots to go over in this car, but it's definitely a very neat um, new design.
Let's get it out on the road and see how it drives. Here we are setting off in silence in the Alfa Romeo Tonale. Now we're gonna keep it into normal mode since we have a kind of city setting coming up here. We're in the capital of Connecticut, Hartford, visiting Valenti Alfa Romeo today. Uh, so we are in a kind of city setting today for our test drive, uh, but we're definitely gonna make the most of it. Uh, we will get an acceleration clip, see how this does, you know, switch it into dynamic. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely make the most of this test drive. Come on, sir. All right. And let's just keep in mind that this is a plug-in hybrid, so it makes those cool hybrid noises when you're uh, when you're taking off here. So setting off, I think the first uh, section of our test drive might be at some slower speeds here, but that's all right. We'll get uh, mixed driving here going on. So, And these uh, test drives are a one take video. So whatever happens, happens on these test drives. So you'll never know. <laughs> Immediately, the Tonali feels pretty smooth. The steering is very Alfa Romeo-like, um, meaning that it's very direct. Uh, has a good weight even in the uh, more normal mode and uh, it feels pretty good at least at the lower speed suspension feels pretty comfy um, brakes feel a little spongy as in a traditional hybrid fashion uh, but that's all right and it's really nice with this plug-in hybrid if you live in a city like we are now the gasoline engine hasn't turned on once even with uh you know all this acceleration going on and stopping and everything it also has regenerative braking too um so that does help recoup the battery and it's actually got a pretty nice level of sound insulation too in it uh, not a whole lot of wind noise, even though it's actually a very windy day outside. Uh, so that's good. Now at this corner here, we're going to be making a left. Uh, I'm going to put it into the dynamic mode, which will fire up the gasoline engine and will allow us to have the maximum amount of power. Now we're going to do an acceleration test here very quick and we'll see what happens. I'm just going to mash the throttle and see. Actually, a pretty brisk acceleration here. Uh, once the gasoline engine comes to life and gets in the right gear, it uh, it actually gets up and goes pretty good. You know, 285 horsepower, 347 pound-feet of torque, and a car of this size is definitely a very uh, nice amount of power. Um, now, at the upper speeds like this, when you let off the throttle, you actually have a bit of regenerative braking going on. But that pretty much wraps up the video and a test drive on the Alfa Romeo Tonali. You know, we have a kind of a short time on the road with this car. Uh, but giving the setting, that's all we got for now. So I appreciate all of you guys watching this video. And I hope you stick with us here next time on Tie Drives.